Welcome to this Medicine Masterclass on Pulmonary Fibrosis. Pulmonary fibrosis or fibrotic lung disease is a restrictive lung disease which results in stiffness and decreased compliance of the, of the lung and reduces the total lung capacity. This is caused by an inflammatory and fibroblast cell infiltration. On spirometry, both the FEV1 and the FVC are reduced. As a result, the FEV1 to FVC ratio remains normal or can be increased. Patients will present with progressive exertional dyspnea, a chronic dry cough, and may have extra respiratory symptoms such as an arthralgia and arthritis. On examinations, patient may be tachypneic, clubbed, centrally cyanosed, have bibasal fine end inspiratory crepitations and will have crackles which do not abate on coughing, unlike those of pulmonary edema or pneumonia. There are a number of potential etiologies, each of them with their own etiological clues. For example, rheumatoid arthritis associated with fibrosis, the patient may have evidence of rheumatoid arthritis, which is a peripheral symmetrical deforming polyarthropathy. In the hands, you'd see ulnar deviation, swan neck deformity, Z thumb, uh, as well as nodules. Now, fibrosis in these patients may be caused by the disease itself or iatrogenic through the use of methotrexate. Drugs, amiodarone can cause fibrosis and the patient would appear slate gray. Connective tissue disease, such as systemic sclerosis or lupus or dermatomyositis, have their own cutaneous manifestations. Ankylosing spondylitis, the patient may have uh, kyphosis, a question mark post uh, posture, and a protuberant abdomen. Radiation causing fibrosis, you may see a radiation tattoo over the chest wall, and they may have residual lymphadenopathy from a tumour. Sarcoidosis, you may see uh, erythema nodosum. So as a result of all of these etiologies, you can imagine there's a number of investigations that you would need to do. The bloods, looking for uh, eosinophilia, anemia, polycythemia in a full blood count, CRP and ESI to look for inflammatory and rheumatoid etiologies, immunoglobulins and complement, and autoimmune screen is particularly important particularly when thinking about lupus, blood serum precipitins and serum ACE levels uh, would be helpful in uh, sarcoidosis. An ABG is very important to determine whether the patient has a type 1 or type 2 respiratory failure picture. In particular with, uh, with fibrotic lung disease, you'd be looking for hypoxemia on the blood gas. Imaging a chest x-ray or a chest radiograph would be useful to diagnose the extent and distribution of fibrosis. You'd expect a volume loss, bilateral reticular nodular interstitial infiltrates, which would manifest as parenchymal shadowing, and with more advanced disease, ground glass honeycombing. A HRCT is the gold standard, and this would allow you to clearly uh, detect ground glass changes, honeycombing, and reticular nodular shadowing, along with the loss of volume. In chronic cases, an echo is important to determine the presence of pulmonary hypertension uh, and evidence of, of core pulmonale. Lung function tests would demonstrate a restrictive pattern with reduced transfer factor, and in some patients, a bronchiolar alveolar lavage is useful to help determine underlying cell types to look for any evidence of malignancy, neutrophils, lymphocytes, fibroblasts. If the diagnosis is not clear, then the patient may require an invasive biopsy, usually done through a VATS procedure, video-assisted or uh, open or transbronchial biopsy to determine histology to make a definitive diagnosis. Now, fibrosis can occur in the lower zones or in the upper zones or throughout. Now, classically, lower zone fibrosis, we can use a mnemonic ABCD, can occur as a result of asbestosis, bleomycin, connective tissue diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis or systemic lupus erythematosus, dermatomyositis, cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis um, results in lower zone fibrosis, and other drugs such as methotrexate, amiodarone, hydralazine, nitrofurantoin also result in lower zone fibrosis. Upper zone fibrosis is relatively rarer and is caused by rarer things such as beryliosis, or if the patient's had radiation, which is usually, if for breast cancer, would affect the superior parts of the lungs, would result in upper lobe fibrosis. 
extrinsic allergic alveolitis or pneumoconiosis, for example, coal workers' pneumoconiosis would result in apical fibrosis, ankylosing spondylitis, ABPA, silicosis and sarcoidosis, as well as tuberculosis and histiocytosis would result in upper lobe fibrosis. Now be aware that industrial diseases such as silicosis and asbestosis uh, can result in fibrosis. In silicosis, silica particles are very fibrogenic and exposure can occur during metal mining, stone quarrying, sandblasting, even uh, pottery and ceramic manufacturing. And the chest radiograph classically demonstrates eggshell calcification um, of the hyla nodes. And uh, it's important because this is linked to an occupation, the patient can be entitled to compensation. Asbestosis also can lead to fibrosis. There are various fibres, blue, brown and white asbestosis fibres. Blue fibres, uh, also known as crocodylite, are the most fibrinogenic. Brown fibres, the amosite fibres, are intermediate risk for fib fibrosis generation. And the white fibres, the chrysotile fibres, are the least fibrinogenic. And uh, patients who have been in the building trade or in the uh, ship making firms may have had exposure to asbestos. Some patients will just develop pleural plaques and others will go on to develop asbestosis. Coal workers pneumoconiosis, these are patients who have inhaled coal particles, i.e. minors, um, can also result in quite advanced fibrosis. And remember Kaplan syndrome is pneumoconiosis associated with rheumatoid arthritis. How do you manage patients with pulmonary fibrosis? It's a multidisciplinary team approach, a patient-centered approach, look, taking a holistic approach. Conservatively, supportive care and observation and pulmonary rehabilitation. Medically, they may require long-term oxygen. Opiates can help with anxiety and difficulty breathing. Steroids have a limited role, and in certain cases, antifibrotic therapy with perfenidone or, or nintenanib can help. Immunosuppressants are also used, for example, cyclophosphamide, mycophenolate morphetal is a thioprine and methotrexate. In refractory cases, uh, if an MDT decision is made, the patient may be eligible for a lung transplant, um, or if the disease is more advanced, the patient may require palliative care input and decisions about escalation and do not attempt resuscitation um, dis discussions happen early on because such patients with advanced fibrotic disease um, do not do very well in an intensive care setting. In terms of management principles for patients with pulmonary fibrosis, it's important to take a holistic patient-centered approach through a multidisciplinary team. Conservatively, supportive care and regular observation is important with pulmonary rehabilitation, smoking cessation, um, as well as removing any causative allergens or medications, offering regular vaccinations, and if there's a, an industrial component to consider compensation. Medically, treat the underlying cause, offer oxygen therapy or long-term oxygen therapy. Opiates can help with difficulty breathing as well as anxiety. In some cases, steroids may have a, a limited use. Um, immunosuppressants such as cyclophosphamide, mycophenolate morphetal, azathioprine and methotrexate can be used. Antioxidants such as NAC or N-acetylcysteine can help in some cases. And where appropriate antifibrotic therapy with nintenadib or perfenidone can be used. Surgically, a single or double lung transplant uh, may be offered to some cases. However, this is a very difficult condition to treat. And if the disease is advanced, the patient may require palliative input and discussions about ceilings of care and do not attempt resuscitation uh, orders are put in place earlier in the interest of the patient as such patients do not do very well in an intensive care setting. Thank you for attending this Medicine Masterclass.